Hello and good day. This is Seth Henderson and I have just coded another thing. I've coded my own interactive shell. It's not advanced. I hope to... The purpose of my coding videos is more... I want to showcase portions of languages or just things I code that are kind of dumb. I want to showcase their features for and help other people come along my learning journey and also invite discussion and awareness of technologies I like and appreciate. So in this one is a shell. Let me show you. Here is my shell. It's really, really simplistic. Um, let me go over some of the points. I will put this code out either on GitLab or GitHub. For those of you who don't know what GitLab is, if you have projects that you want to work on privately, it allows near unlimited private repositories. They have a really high cap at like 100,000 or something. So yeah, you have unlimited repositories. Anyway, so some things I learned during this one. I learned that this is a way you can import specific uh, specific uh, libraries you with using the bracket thing here. I used the as there, that's neither here nor there. I learned that when you use the print method, like here, the print macro, you need it stores the output in a buffer, and in that buffer it it just stores it until you until it runs out for what for right of reason. Print line down here will empty the buffer. So because that's not happening, I need to flush it manually here. This flush actually returns a result that I'm just not ignoring the results of because it's a small project. That's the main things I've learned here. In shell.rs, the submodule, I something that I had a hard time on this one was, which I'm going to figure out eventually, but in this video I gave up and used function pointers. I was trying to use closures in this as this output variable right here. Instead I ended up using function pointers because I found out that closures have at compile time, even if a closure has the same signature, like it takes the input the same kind of variable and outputs the same result and the same number of parameters, it is given a unique ID, a unique type ID at compile time. So it makes it different. Things on the internet that I found indicated that if I box the box it, I can get past that. But I wasn't figuring that out. I also tried implementing it as a trait for this struct, but I I just couldn't figure it out. The reason why it it's a big deal though is because I'm putting all of these commands in a vector to so that at the end I can have a help command that puts out all of the available commands and also a way to find the command I want to I the user types in easily. So that's that there. If any, if there's any resources for understanding this better, I'm still going through the second edition of the book slowly. <laughs> but if anyone has any shortcut articles, then please send them my way. I'd love it. Okay, back down here, execute command. I decided to make all the parameters this optional for whatever reason. Blah, blah, blah. Function which I put in line in this execute method. I grouped all the functions next to the commands. The only one that's really that's interesting that doesn't simply just return a string uh, so it can be displayed is the echo command, which sadly I isn't working yet, but I'll get that working and try and get closures working and hopefully get out another video on this. The echo command just works like a Unix command. You type in what you want to have echoed out, and it gets echoed out. 
One thing I also hope to implement is kind of how in Bash you have a pipe. You can pipe the output of one into another. I'm hoping to be able to pipe things in. So I could pipe echo or pipe into cat, you know, pipe into less, just like those things. And the last little bit I learned was if you do a function pointer, this is the way that you're supposed to execute a command. The only reason I think of, and I may have read it and just subconsciously ignored it, is the only reason I can think of you do it this way instead of just executing it like you would a normal function is so that you know this is a function pointer and, and it's not in fact an actual, a, the function itself. And I don't actually know the use for that. Here I get a list of just the commands and strip out the, the output. And that is only because I wanted to be able to concatenate all of the available commands into one string. So that if you type in something it's, that's garbage, it'll be like, oh, here are the available commands. You're welcome. Maybe I should add that. It's happening. I'm adding that. Uh. Yes, yes. You're welcome. Winky face. Okay, let's let's run this code and I'll demo it. Okay, so I'm a Vim person. This joke, by the way, I pulled from XKCD. The, yeah, I, I did that. Well, anyway, if you type Emacs, same thing. But if any of you know what Ed is, the one true editor, if you type Ed, this is definitely a direct reference to the <laughs> next KCD comic, or a different one. And I type in garbage. I spelled your welcome wrong. Moving on. That is what I pre prepared for today. If, yeah, it, please. I, I'm a little bit introverted, and I say a little bit. Born introverted, somehow becoming more extroverted as I get older. If you have any sort of comments that you'd like to leave, please leave below. And some of them comments get into my spam box and I don't know which ones I really should uh, unspam. And I just start to panic because of that. Most of them are from people who have sound based channels, which anyway, it's interesting. I'm, but that's, if you are insistent that your comment isn't spam and it's in there, just send another comment and I'll fix that. Anyway, thank you. Bye.